Irish do... comedy exploded in the past couple of years. Yeah, and it's like there's a lot of people that can do generic stuff, jokes about airplanes, about relationships, about kids, and I can do all that. I'm gonna try, and I try to like hack away at writing material in that world. But how many people can joke about very niche specific things in our Jewish world? How many people can joke about mincha and like and uh, Jewish prayer and ritual in a good authentic way? There's very few. So I lean into that too. What's your take on the hierarchy, if there is such a thing, or the niche niche versus right? So on general like, comedy, on pure, like on, on an art level, yeah, I think you would appreciate that. It's a, it, and I don't mean like yes, there are fewer people that can joke about that. Mm -hmm. It's less of a talent to be able to walk like to to speak at your friends off and talk about how he got trashed one day and like threw up and make everyone laugh at that is much less. Like everyone has the exact same life experiences to make to draw off that and make people laugh is less talented than a walk into the comedy cellar and you have four Indians over there and black people over there and Asians in the back mm -hmm. and to create a common experience where they can all <laughs> yeah. laugh. Sorry, I was, I was getting like triggered by Shane Gillis is holding SNL, Asians, whatever. No, I'm, I'm joking. I, joked, <laughs> I looked at the camera when you said, to, when you just named to minorities. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it, uh, you, you look at it as a talent hierarchy? Because well, you, said, you said it to Mark too on clean versus unclean. Like it's just easier to do. And I just find like when you're up there and you got a few minutes... It's all difficult. I, no? I think yeah, it is all difficult. But but. The, 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 you have to find a more universal truth that bonds everyone in that room right. more than... So it's, you know when you open up the sitter and you find the right page? It's like, that's, that's, that's less universal. It's, right. it's, it's easier to land on than love or marriage. Or, I, I don't I, agree. I, I, I don't know if I agree. I think, that's, I think they're different challenges. Finding funny in the specificity of this stuff and really making it work in a way that's not low-hanging fruit. Here's the thing, Ami. The, the, the struggle of comedy, Said as you know... Said my name. We're getting serious. Now. Sorry, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to sound like your wife. But <laughs> you know when you hear your name, you're like, something, something. <laughs> the <laughs> struggle of comedy, as you know, is not necessarily the punchline and the actual nakuda, the actual point, which is funny, <laughs> but it is, to, it is to set up the premise. You have yeah. tw 20 seconds to set up a premise that is basically 20 years of your life. Mm -hmm. So to catch people up on on 20 years of experiences in 20 seconds basically that is much easier when you're dealing with a room full of people who have the exact same life hmm. right i want to talk about jewish concepts in front of non-jews i want to do that mezuzah joke that cocaine mezuzah joke that's what i've been saying like, in front of non-jews and, and, and make take it, it relatable. to the world but that is the challenge that's a challenge i don't want to lean out of like my jewish material i want to make it relatable i, I just don't know if it's hierarchical i'm not saying the challenges aren't different performing at the cellar for a for a non-affiliated crowd presents one challenge, which is that, versus an affiliated crowd that thinks they get you, and now you have to turn all this known source material into legit comedy. I, yeah. I've said this before, but I think if you guys are doing it right and you're, you're performing for a Jewish-only crowd, the jokes should be good and universal enough for anyone to be in there and appreciate it, e uh -huh. even though it's so unique and specific. Interesting. Well, is your job to entertain the room or to entertain the world? Um, I'm, I'm not saying it's your job to. I just I, I think that's the challenge for you guys. Well, I'll give you an example. When I did a show recently, the Elon sh uh, the, yeah. the show with West oh, Side, best and they had ever. a cr amazing, and you had a table of non-Jews cracking up. One table of non-Jews. That is very helpful. Because, but it, it was helpful because right. it called out where in your bits you need exposition, and so I turned to them, and I actually got some stuff out of jokes I never could get. Remember when I was explaining things to them and using them as like a... a, a, could, a that's the perfect crowd. A yeah. from a Jew, but that helps you really your bits because yeah. you can explain Jewish concepts to them and that's the premise for making like... You could be like, so we wave the chicken around of our, our, the head and we give it all our sins and then we kill the chicken and we eat it and get back our sins and then we give it to the fish. And like these are things you can't say in a fully Jewish crowd because they're right. like, yeah, we know what Tashlach is. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. And if you over explain to a Jewish crowd, they get insulted like, we know this. Like, stop. Right. But I just think each scenario presents different comedic challenges but the, the format is the same and the challenge is the same like find the funny like that's all that's all right. i'm saying so there is a higher you have an advantage me. to a jewish crowd but you also like have to stay away from certain things or you have to like i don't know i don't know like to me it's just it's not it's it's splitting hairs a little bit on like well it's one thing to perform and it's one thing to kill in front of an all jewish crowd it's another thing to kill at a club. It's like, is it that different? I mean, killing. I is, think it's very different. It's very hard. It's also, just very hard for me. It's a little different than you because I think a lot of like, like a lot of my early like selling out shows in mm -hmm. like Teaneck and Bergenfield and Englewood right. was that my family was very well known. I came from this yeah. basically family of rabbis. My brothers are rabbis. All my all, all my uncles are rabbis mm -hmm. and. And it was this like, wait, wait, wait Newberger's son is doing comedy. I got to yeah. see this. That makes it harder, I think. I thought that was cheaper. See, to so, me, in a room of people who know you, 
They're not more judging. More pressure, but more pressure. But more, I did two shows uh, at, at Stand Up New York, and the first show was like a bringer show. Like everyone who came knew me personally. Like right. that's the seen one it. I hosted. The one you hosted. Yeah. And it was just like I could feel everyone laughing for a second, and then like, okay, let's see what else he does. Like watching me. Let's see what Atlas Ami yes. does. That's harder about Juice Craft. Second, specifically. yeah, second show fans who didn't know me personally and we're laughing at the material so you're right. getting such a different read because people are like watching you do something versus laughing at the joke i think that happens to be something else your first show had a lot of like old jewish dads old mm -hmm. jewish dads come to performances in general come to comedy shows it's like okay let's see what he has show me what you got mm -hmm. type, type of thing every jewish dad at a comedy show is like I could do this. <laughs> Turns this way, like I just want you to know, if we didn't have to pay tuition, like this would be one hundred percent. This, this, they all think that they could do it. And it was very Jewish dad vibes. I've done it enough times to know that the more familiar the crowd is with you personally, the harder the stand up. Interesting. Is. And the the more they're just like neutral or fans already, like then you have a little more like, right? You know, it's a blank slate. So then they're going to project onto you this other persona that you're creating on stage and nothing else. Right. Well, I talk a lot about my parents in my sets. Yeah. So I find if a crowd really knows my parents, they die. Okay, yeah, sure. So, like, that helps me a lot. What's the cocaine mezuzah joke? <laughs> you did say that. You do yeah. say that. It's a great uh, It's a great joke. That's also a combination of a couple different stories, mm -hmm. some of which I can say on the podcast, some of which I definitely can't say on the yeah. podcast. But <laughs> basically, it's um, this concept, but, like, I don't know. When were you, how old were you when you got married? 30. Oh, wow. so you might be able to relate to this. Yeah. I was very old. <laughs> yeah, I was 30. Yeah. So I, I find as you get older and yeah. single – the things that like your your parents will always give you instructions. My parents happen to be super gentle mm -hmm. and they're like very hands off. Mm -hmm. But the things you end up fighting with about your parents, like don't do this, don't do that, it's literally like if you knew the rest of this, I swear you wouldn't care about what we're fighting over. Like if you knew the rest of my life, like all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I have this joke where my parents come to my apartment and my dad's like look my dad's a rabbi, he's looking at my mezuzah. He's like, Don't be listen, like I don't like to be annoying, but <laughs> your mezuzah, it's a little low. Like it should be on the first third of the door and i'm like I'm a, i'll move it no problem but i also there's a full bag of cocaine <laughs> inside <laughs> that is right now <laughs> and i get into if it's from crowds i'll be like like my roommate bought it he didn't take trumo off the cocaine or whatever like, <laughs> we switched vendors to an israeli cocaine guy because like we're trying to support, support the war and everything's on mr al Khai these days has it been doing the bit Killing? The big kills right yeah. now. Yeah, it's I, like it's what we care the, about the small minutiae of things and there's a bag of coke in the mezuzah right that's a great little it's based on true stories, though. Do you say the cocaine was in the mezuzah? So because that's a great little thing. Cocaine mezuzah instead that's a of great cocaine. For like a movie, I love yeah. that. Yeah, but like, what is the joke? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. So it's been you tried it very recently. Like you just mentioned it casually for a second. I didn't. One, I actually didn't like write that joke out and like yeah. work it through. I just tried it at, at Elon's show yeah. in Debonair. Okay. And it and it flew. So yeah. like I worked on it a little more. Yeah. And then really developed it nicely. Are you generally pen to paper daily? Like, what's I no, try to figure this out? Like, in months, you haven't written, yeah. but in the beginning, building Find up it. the material, you were writing it out or typing it out, and and like, or is it like my process the is my process is like go on the New York City subway, see like something funny, like a homeless guy, like like coming on and asking like you to you buy push the, him, you give him a little shove, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you sorry, say, I'm a I'm a comedian. <laughs> Yeah. And you say there's a pre yeah, premise here. Yeah. Write it down on my notes. That's notes, yeah. stand up notes. Yeah. Um, like go to Shul, see some guy do something funny, and then.